Today's best country, it's Froggy 101. I'm Crockett. Joining me on the phone, it's Big E Langston, WWE superstar Big E. To call you big is an understatement. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Now, you've actually been to our neck of the woods before down in Scranton, Pennsylvania for the USAPL Raw Nationals powerlifting competition. That's right. Yeah. So uh, A couple years ago. Yeah. I was looking at that. I said, Scram, well, no shit. That's where we're from. So let me ask you, do you remember about that day? Do you remember Scranton, Pennsylvania at all? Yeah, yeah, of course. Now, are you just saying that? What? <laughs> no, I, um, I got to leave, uh, obviously, I was in town, uh, for national, I was just going to walk around a little bit, I got to see the mall, uh, but yeah, I got to see a little bit of Scranton. So you're going to be back in our neck of the woods come July 7th. Now, you went to Iowa, Iowa Hawkeyes, right? Yep. And I see you graduate with a Bachelor of Arts. I did. Well, so I what, did, believe what, it or not. With the arts, what were you looking to do with the arts? Um, my major is to be in general is, uh, with health and sports studies, uh, but I wanted to be an athletic director. Ah, an athletic director. See, I was thinking you were going to go more into theatrical arts. <laughs> oh, no, no, I wasn't in drama or anything. Well, no, I, but, uh, no, yeah, no. If anybody hasn't seen your Twitter page, you were probably one of the funnier people I follow on Twitter. Well, thank you. I try. I just for me, man. I, I hate uh, people always expect someone that looks like me to uh, you know tweet very bland stuff or, or send pictures of, of the meal they've eaten. Uh, that's something really stupid. So uh, I just kind of tweet whatever is you know silly and any things come to mind, and uh, some people seem to be into it. So let's keep going. So how how exactly did you get into wrestling? Because you were a football player, you were a uh, all state wrestler. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I uh, was an amateur wrestler in high school, but I actually just ended up um, when I was in Iowa. I, I knew uh, my buddy who was a poster in Iowa who helped get me in. Uh, she just needed Jim Ross. And it's really just a matter of knowing the right people at the right time. So your college got you the right steps, got you involved with Jim Ross. Were you a guy that watched wrestling in high school and college, or was that not really your uh, your thing? I did, I did. I was a big, uh, a big wrestling fan. Uh, Goldberg was my favorite wrestler as a kid. Um, my dad got me into wrestling, so I grew up watching wrestling, WCW and uh, WWF in time, so I was a big wrestling fan when I was younger. See, that's the thing. I was a wrestler in high school, uh, a little bit in college, and no one on my team, they hated me because I liked pro wrestling. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, when I was a kid, it was, uh, it was like during the Attitude Era, so wrestling was huge, so everyone I knew uh, was in wrestling when I was a kid. Right, same for me. Growing up, I was in the Attitude Era, and that was it. It was the Attitude Era, and no one in my school liked wrestling. It blew my mind. I was like, how can you guys not? And I went to school in West Virginia, so you think them rednecks uh, would have loved Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> they could care less. Yeah, you would think. No, no, no. I grew up in, in Tampa, Florida, and everyone, everyone I went to school with in middle school uh, loved wrestling. So, now, you mentioned a few minutes ago that your father was big into pro wrestling. Who was your dad's favorite wrestler? Uh, my dad loved uh, Dusty Rose because he saw him in the armory uh, when he was in Tampa and just his crushes about Dusty. So, so have you got, given your dad a chance to see Dusty Rhodes? No, unfortunately. Um, actually, the, the cool part was uh, I got to work pretty much on a daily basis under Dusty uh, uh, with him being at NXT, which was FCW before, and the developmental system. Right. But I was coming to range the media. So even working hand-in-hand hand with Dusty Rhodes, working under him, you still didn't get your dad a chance to meet Dusty. No, I mean, now that you, you keep mentioning I guess I'm a, bit, uh, a little bit embarrassed by the fact that I haven't uh, set this up yet. Well, Dusty seems like a pretty innovative, fun-going guy. You could probably get him in, like, a cake and wheel him in for your dad's birthday. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's a sight that... Uh, you know, it, it might be a little unsettling for my dad. He's an older man. It might be too much for him. <laughs> well, Dusty was always big on those goofy matches like the electric steel cage. He might be down to go on a cake and uh, meet your father. Yeah, he might be up for it. He might be. I got to talk to him about it. So you said you're from Florida originally. Where are you located at now? Where are you living? Um, I'm living in, uh, just outside of Tampa, Mendeley. Oh, so you're still pretty much home. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Not too far. So now that you're a big WWE superstar, you're on television all the time. When you go out, do people flock to you? Do they know who you are? Or they just think you're this massive dude wandering down the street? On uh, occasion, I mean, I think, uh, a lot of people, our product's pretty visible. Uh, so there are, there are people from time to time who recognize me. Have you found yourself having trouble adjusting to the limelight of being a WWE superstar? Uh, not really. I mean, I think I take things in stride. I try to at least, and uh, it's, it's pretty cool usually being able to interact with fans and people who enjoy what you do. So that's always been a positive. It's uh, something a little different for me, uh, but, you know, it's, it's definitely been a positive thing interacting with fans. So what's next for the world of Big E Langston? Are you going to stick besides AJ and Dolph Ziggler, or are you planning on moving into a singles career? Well, I think it's, uh, this is going to start for me, and uh, my affiliation with, with Dolph and AJ has been great for me, uh, just because they're as popular as they are. And, uh, you know, when I started in December of last year, 
uh, it's just a great way to, to you know be introduced. But in the same vein, um, I'm loyal to uh, to our uh, our dynamic duo or group, I should say, the trio. Um, but but I also you know I have aspirations, obviously, of, of being you know a star in my own right as well. So you know the time will, will come where well I'll branch out on my own. But it's uh, you know I'm, I'm really excited about what I'm doing right now. But you know, in the future, I definitely see myself being a, a top guy, a main eventer. So I mean, time will come. That time will come. But I'm excited about the future. Speaking of Dolph Ziggler, he was a big-time collegiate wrestler, and you were a big wrestler in high school. You guys ever go uh, head-to-head in an amateur wrestling match? No, no. I've uh, I've never <laughs> we've never uh, rolled around or done anything like that. Uh, yeah, Dolph, I, I never wrestled in college, so I'm sure he has the, uh, the leg up on me. Uh, but no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's something we haven't approached yet. Now, Dolph just did an interview with Colt Cabana, and he was talking about how he was always a showman in high school wrestling. He was always on. Do you get to experience Dolph Ziggler always being on? Is he always being himself, or is it kind of just for the the television? Yeah, I mean, the the one thing about Dolph that I think a lot of people don't realize is uh, how witty and clever he is, and he's like that constantly. So it's, uh, uh, I know he's getting opportunities to stand up uh, from time to time, uh, but no, he's, he's one of those guys who's just always on, always uh, sharp and quick-witted, which is uh, you know pretty cool to be around. So a lot of people may not know that Dolph Ziggler, like you said, does stand-up comedy, but what's something people don't know about Big E Langston? What's something that a lot of people wouldn't know about you? Oh, man, um, I'm pretty much an open book for the most part. Um, I guess one thing that's not too publicized is I was actually uh, – a teaching assistant at Iowa when I was in grad school, so I graded papers, uh, you know, for uh, for university students and whatnot. It's a little different from what I'm doing now, but yes, I did that for a year before I got signed. So you're grading college papers. Did that ever like cause a problem with you and some of your fellow classmates? <laughs> no, I uh, I can imagine that wouldn't have turned out too well for many people. But no, there were there were no issues with with uh, with that at all. Because I know I can talk from experience. I wasn't the <laughs> the greatest student in college, and if you were grading my papers and you said I got an F, I think I would just Take one look and take your word for it. Yeah, I think that was the approach most students had, believe it or not. <laughs> what is the best moment so far of your career? What's been the highlight thus far? Um, there have been a couple. Uh, I think WrestleMania, I mean, obviously being the show of shows, is, is obviously going to be the biggest moment. Uh, but also, like, even, you know, I've had, to, I had a match with Chris Jericho. I've uh, had an interaction with Ric Flair on TV. Uh, sort of things like that, guys you've grown up watching, uh, you know, since, you know, 10, 15 years ago who now, you know, you're in the same ring as is pretty cool, too. But, I mean, for me, WrestleMania will always be, you know, for me, uh, currently the biggest moment. But, again, being with those legends is, is always a big deal. Big E, before you go, I have one last thing that I have to ask you. Uh, every Monday night, my buddies and I, we watch uh, Raw, and my buddy gets very upset because he thinks that your singlet is too short. Well, uh, I think uh, the, the aim for me is to do something different. And, you know, no one wants to be uh, cookie cutter. Uh, but in the same vein, uh, believe it or not, he's not the only one that feels that way. Uh, and there might be, yeah, it might change. There might be an evolution with the singlet. But uh, yeah, it's something I, I get some negative feedback from time to time on it. But uh, yeah, this is something trying to be different, trying to stand out. I don't think anybody's going to tell you to your face they got a problem with it. That's very true. That is true. <laughs> Biggie, thanks for joining the show. We will see you July 7th. Well, thanks again. Thanks for having me. Like this.